Greetings, Greg here again with another video helping you transform your business, helping you transform your life. I'm so excited about this video. It's the mobile Odoo Toolkit. Um, it's now, I got it working in Odoo 15 and it's available now in the beta version. Uh, certainly uh, comment, please like and subscribe on this video. That really, really helps me out. If you're interested in this toolkit, it is available on my Mastermind uh, Od uh, Mastering Odoo Development Edition. And so you'll see links below to Odoo Inner Circle and you can see how to get your hands on this toolkit. But I'm excited about it. I'm gonna just jump right in and show how quickly you can build an app. Uh, and these are native apps. These are native apps that run on Android, native apps for iOS, native for Mac, PC, all with the same code base. So you can see more about Unity and about how all of the different platforms that this will run on, but it's also hyper, hyper optimized for mobile. So you get very, very fast apps, small amounts of memory utilized and access to tons and tons and tons of assets. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you how fast this works. We're just in a blank scene here. Nothing in here at all. I can go in here to Odoo Toolkit and it sees that there's no manager object yet for this, for the server and everything. So I create this and you'll notice it'll come up here and say a server is required. We need to specify a server. And this one, this logo is my Odoo 15 server. And you'll notice as soon as it gets the server and it connects and does a test connect and it says it's ready to go, ready to do queries against the server. If I hit this little edit button, I can see all that you have to specify. So it's super easy. You just say the host address, the login, the password, and the database. And since this will run over SSL, if this was an, a, a secure socket layer, all of your security and everything's handled just like it would be as if you're like logging into your bank so to speak. So it, it uses an SSL connection if, if you have it. And so this really just hooks up to the server. Of course, we want models and hook to an Odoo model. So if I click here, I can pick from some of these Odoo models I've already pulled over. And I've pulled over some of the data inside of these models. So I'll put, put contacts, for example. And now once I've got contacts picked, I can come in here and do a query. And just like that, I can see the data right here inside of my mobile application editor. From here, I can immediately start using this to create an app with. So let's go here, I'm gonna go here to UI, I'm gonna do Text Mesh Pro, and I'll give this a title. I'm gonna close that because we don't need to look at that right now. And we'll just call this my first Odoo mobile app. And we'll make this a little bigger like this and we could center it. So you get all these nice tools. I mean, this is one of the best editors. Um, you know, it's, it's used to make um, literally billion dollar uh, applications um, have been made with, with this editor. Here, just a simple text, but now let's show how we can get this data on here. And I can come down here. I have a controls folder inside of my Odoo toolkit, and I can just drag a JSON text up here. And this is empty because I haven't pulled any data yet for it. I can come here and just see that it's hooked up to the contacts model and I'm looking at the name from that model to see it. And without even starting I, the app, I can come here and hit first, next, previous. So I'm, 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 I'm managing the data and I'm, I'm laying my app out and actually seeing it with the data in it, but I'm not even running the app yet. Now I could come back here and say, well, I also want to show the image here, for example, that might be nice to have in our app. So I can just come back here, pull this JSON image up and drag it up here as well. And I can move this down, put our picture here, maybe make it a little bigger. Maybe that's a good reason to move this to this side, wherever we want it. Again, you got all these tools uh, at your disposal. The idea is I've built this toolkit so it makes it really easy to hook in with your data with Odoo. So when I click on the image, it says here we got to tell what model we want to use. We'll tell it we're going to use the contacts model and you'll see that it's got the image here already selected. And if I go to our data set and I go to the first record, you'll see that it's pulling the picture and we can go through just like that. So it's really easy to build the apps pull the data in and this app is literally ready when we run it it's going to do the query and pull it in uh, and pull give us the first record just like this now we would want to have our own first next 
back and all that with it. So we might come here to our canvas and I have here a nav panel and I can drag this nav panel up and I can resize it. So this is a simple one. Obviously you could have really nice uh, graphics and pictures and everything, but I just made a simple little first next. And the nav panel notice here can be attached to any model as well. And so when I run this now, I can use this little nav panel to navigate our our, our, our thing here, our pictures. Now, this is not meant to be a code-free app builder. This, you're just seeing the results of, uh, of what is underneath a, a pretty easy to use framework. Uh, and these controls are built on top of it. And you got a lot of control and, and you can get an app up and going really, really fast with it. But uh, I'm not wanting to try to make it out to be that this is some kind of code-free app builder. It's not designed to be that. It's, this is for developers. It's been written for enterprise programmers to easily hook into this data, uh, essentially being able to pull these models in. So I'm going to show you now how you can get these models from Odoo uh, really quickly. So it's not just the contacts I did, but we'll see how you can do that with anything else that you want as well. So let's say we wanted to put some products on here or talk to the product data. And we haven't pulled that data from Odoo yet. So we don't want to just pull every model from Odoo and pull all the data into our app. We want to be very specific about which models we want to use in our application. And we want to be very specific about which fields we need from those models. And uh, we, I've made the tool so it makes it relatively easy to do that. So I can come down here to models, I can just go into base, and I'm going to come here and say create Odoo Toolkit model. So this gives us a new model object, I'm going to call this product summary, and I can call it whatever I want. And I can have as many models inside of my app builder here talking to as many models as I want in Odoo. So there's no limit to how many of these you can create. You just pick which model it is here. So as soon as I pick model, I get a list of all the models from Odoo and it's like literally gone to Odoo's back end and it's seen a list of these models and I can say product.products. And notice as soon as I do that, we're still in the setup phase here. So we still can't use this model yet inside of Unity, but it's it's now turned green here because it knows what model we want to use. It's basically saying we could go ahead and create this model right now, uh, which I could do, and I hit create. And as soon as I create that, it creates a, literally a model inside of Unity that has every single field inside of product.product .product for us. And it's now going to recompile our app and we don't get any errors. I, I had some warnings there, but those are just re not related to anything that I'm doing really as much as the screen edit, uh, refreshing. But you can see it's done. Now we can see this code real easily by going to debugging and saying select class in here in the project. And here's the code that got created right here. I can open it up and see this actually got created for us with, every, with all the properties from Odoo bringing this over in for us in into here and uh, in, along with things to map images over a lot of a lot of work into basically mapping this over would it would take a lot of time if you didn't have this built for you to say what which fields you get in so that's how it's easily drag and droppable and how it's easily uh, shows up inside the inspector. So let's see, like if I wanted to show some of these items inside the inspector, I could come into my code here by hand and say, well, I want to see the default code and type in show in inspector right here. And this is going to tell us that we want to see that code inside of our inspector. And if I find display name, like this, I can show this in the inspector as well, like that. And with just those kind of changes, I could save that, come back. It's going to recompile that script, and I can query that data right now and see it. Just simple, simple as that. So I can come in um, 
back here to our base, go to our product uh, summary. That was the one I made right here. Data, query, and we'll see default code and display name because those are the ones I picked. But if I chose, I have it even a little better than that. We can come over here to setup, and I can actually come here to this included fields and say I want to include the display name. I want to include the default code. I want to include the image 256. We'll use the 256 image. Let's get the description as well. And I think we should have some kind of price. Yeah, we'll just do price. And um, now in the inspector, let's choose to show the display name and the image. Just like that. And we're telling it right now how to build that file. So if I come here to this one and select it again and we look at it, we'll see that it is, you know, over 600 lines long. And it's got all the fields that it's going to pull over when it gets queried. Uh, we saw the data. It, it's really fast. But we don't really want all that data um, that, that we saw here. Oops, I'm in the wrong object. We don't really want all of all of this data you know to get pulled even though we're only seeing these two fields remember this is just what it's showing inspector underneath it's filling all those objects with data so instead what we'll do we'll come here to set up and notice it remembered everything that we have here so it's going to remember your configuration here i click create model it's going to prompt us to write over that and just basically wipe out uh, that other one and so now we're going to have a cleaner model for our product summary. We don't have to have all that in it. I can go here to data immediately and query, and we'll see that we have our picture and our display name right there in the inspector, and we can page through all the products here. Now let's take a look at this file that got created with the different attributes. Remember, when I first did it, I just said, hey, give us the whole model, and it was over 600 lines of code. Now this one it created is just over a hundred lines because it's just pulled in like the display name and notice it automatically put the show inspector in there for us. It automatically put the show inspector there for the image and um, you know there's things happening here where you can see it's actually creating codes for the preview field in the inspector for us so that everything looks the way it should. So there's a uh, a, a built-on utility here. I want to make sure you understood that uh, this is really powerful. Instead of having to write a lot of code you'd have to do to pull data into this mobile apps, which every other toolkit does. I haven't seen any that doesn't make you write either lots of query strings or do weird things to get the data in. You know, I've created this toolkit so it can pull it in fast. It, it gives you this template, but there's no magic behind it. It's literally, uh, it's magic, but it's it's very straightforward, well architectured, I believe, magic in that it pulls the JSON in. It populates these objects uh, without using metadata inside of your mobile app. It literally creates a object template that can map the data to it and therefore create very low profile, very fast, lightning fast applications. In fact, it make web apps look sickly slow because here it's literally pulling just the data it needs and instantiating objects with just the data it needs for those objects. No extra metadata collections or lists of fields and objects except just in the editor to create uh, this, this really optimized template of your model. And just as quickly, come back here to our canvas. We'll see that we have our, our app here with our first, second, or first, previous, next, last. We could just come right up in here and change this over to product summary, just like that. And just like that, there we go. I come next, 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 next. We oh, next. Yeah. See, see our pictures changing there for our products now because I've wired it up to the products, 
and I can pull anything I want into that image wise and uh, then if I wanted the name say I wanted this to change as well it's just a matter of t saying it I want to hook it up to the product summary and then pull in display name like that and when I refresh we will see it's going to change to customizable desk here everything that goes with that and we can go next 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 and go through it here or when we run it it's going to hook up actually I didn't rewire the uh, this so this won't do anything now um, but I could come in here to the nav panel change it over to the product summary and now look at it in real time it works with that data now so that's how simple it is to just hook up to data show it on the screen hook into the events if for every one of these you'll see if I go here to our server that I have hook events that you have before query events a query success event that will actually pass along the data so that's why you see this list here is that when it's successful it'll pass the data along uh, to anybody who's listening can do something with the data that's how the UI works and then there's qu query failed events that you can subscribe to for every single model it's just exposed right here and it's just a matter of adding your events in and, and what you want to recognize the event so I'm excited about this toolkit again if you're interested in getting started with it I have a full mastering Odoo development series that takes you from everything you need to know about getting started, getting your development environment set up for learning how to use Odoo, learning about the Odoo framework, learning about how everything fits together there. And this toolkit is one of the pieces that is in my mastering uh, Odoo Development Mastermind Edition that really allows you to do some things that you just, I really just don't think you can do uh, with anything else. So I, I'm excited about it. Again, it's still several months uh, off before I'm gonna have like more of a final release that would I would make available outside of my development students. Because uh, when you come to use the toolkit, I will work with you through a workshop, help you get using it. Uh, get you up to speed with it and and get it all uh, set up for you um, and 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 help you with anything you're trying to build with it so hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of how it fits together and i am excited uh to share with you the progress and we'll uh, keep you updated on some of the, the cool new features i'm adding to it